हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज प्रोफेसर एस बी बिल्डिगेरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स टेकिंग ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फॉर बी कॉम थर्ड सेम स्टूडेंट्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट थियरी इन द थर्ड यूनिट दैट इज आल्फेड वेबर्स थियरी ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल लोकेशन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट the introduction part and the assumptions of weber's theory of industrial location the last assumption of that uh, theory what we have studied in the previous class that is there must be homogeneous climate it means what weber's theory is applicable for the homogeneous climatical condition it is not applicable for heterogeneous climatical conditions it means if we are lo locating an industry it is possible in a single country but it is not possible in different countries at the same time you know why at the same time there is no homogeneous climatical condition in a different countries of the world today let us uh, have a discussion on the continued part of the same theory based on the following assumptions of weber's theory he tries to answer the following questions there were two important questions uh, arise in front of uh, weber after having a look on that various assumptions first question is why a given industry moves from one place to another you know why why a single industry moving from one place to another what is the reason behind that we have to understand there must be a reason if a single industry is moving from one place to another there must be a reason behind that and second question is what general economic factors determines these movements what are the determinants of general and economic factors for the moment of these industrial locations we have to understand to answer these two questions he has spent a lot of time to complete this theory this entire theory is depends upon these two questions and this entire theory tries to answer only for these two questions according to this theory location of an industry is determined by following factors according to weber location of an industry is possible only with the help of these three important factors and each entrepreneur is always focusing on these three areas while locating his own industry in a particular place whoever may be the entrepreneur the entrepreneurs like you and me also focusing more on these three areas while locating our own industry in a particular place look at the areas aspects first one is transport cost transport cost at present plays an important role for location of an industry every entrepreneur is always giving more preference for transportation cost while fixing while locating his own industry second one is labor cost third one is agglomerative and deglomerative factors uh, let us understand one by one these three areas which are influencing the industrial location according to alfred weber okay now let us understand the transport cost according to weber transport costs plays a vital role in the determination of location of an industry okay the industrial location can be determined fixed based on the transportation cost according to weber these transport costs influenced by 
three basic elements. What are the basic points, basic areas in that transport cost? Three important areas we are focusing more when it comes to transport as an entrepreneur. Okay, as an entrepreneur like you and me are always focusing more on three areas when it comes to transport cost. Look at the first element that is the way to be transported. Okay, before going to locate our industry, what amount of weight we have to carry, what amount of weight we have to bring from other places, we are focusing more on these areas. And second element is the distance to be carried. What amount of distance we are going to carry? Suppose, for example, if we are locating an industrial unit in a particular place, what amount of resources are required? Whether the market center is nearest, whether it is, for example, in a long distance, we have to focus on these areas also. You know why? If uh, we are locating our industry in the Jammu and Kashmir and resources we are carrying from Karnataka, it is not a fair location of industry. Why? Long distance we have to carry the resources for that particular unit. It is not a fair location of industry. So we have to focus more on what distance we are carrying the raw materials for our own industrial units. Third important, important element, that is the nature of the commodity. After having a look on the weight to be transported and distance to be carried, one more important thing we have to have, more focus, that is the nature of the commodity, whether the size, nature means size of the commodity, whether the size of the commodity is small, medium or bulk. If it is bulk in size, can you tell me where you are going to locate the industry? If the raw material which is required for your own industrial unit is bulk in size, where you are going to locate the industry? It means what? You are locating the industry near to the raw materials. You know why? If the material, if the raw material is bulk in size, it the costs, heavy transportation cost, okay, heavy weight you have to transport from one place to another, heavy distance you have to transport, for example, more distance you have to transport from one place to another. Okay, so the location of an industry is also depends upon the nature, the size, the quantity of the commodity. If it is, uh, for example, small in size, you may locate your industry near to the market centers. If it is bulk in size, you must, for example, locate your industry near to the raw material centers. This is what we have to understand in transportation cost. Weber, in his theory, classified the raw materials into following categories. And all these raw materials, my dear students, are coming in the examination for objective questions, for two marks questions. Okay. According to Weber, he classified raw materials into following categories. First one is ubiquitous materials. In the question they may ask what is ubiquities? Okay. If it is in the examination, you have to answer it in a very systematic manner. Very easy answer is there for that. Ubiquitous material is nothing but the materials which are available everywhere at all the time. Look at the example. What materials are available everywhere at all the times? Water, air, sunshine and clay. What you understood over here? You have to understand if your industrial unit is ubiquitous material oriented, you can locate it in any, for example, corners of the country. There is no question, there is no problem at all when your unit is ubiquitous material oriented, for example. Why? You know why? Water is available everywhere, 
air, sunshine and clay is available everywhere. If these are the resources for your business, you can locate anywhere in the entire country. I hope you understood my dear students. According to Weber, your location of an industry or your industrial unit is ubiquitous material oriented. You can locate it anywhere in the any corners of the country for example. Okay. Look at the second category of uh, raw materials according to Weber. That is localized materials. The materials which are available in a particular place or location. Localized materials means the materials, the raw materials which are available in a particular place or location is called as localized materials. Example, iron ore, coal, these are the example, these resources are not available everywhere at all the times. I'll tell you one example here. You know the thermal power project of Karnataka. Karnataka has started its thermal power project in Raichur, in Raichur district. You know why Karnataka state government started its uh, thermal power project in Raichur only? Other than Raichur, it, it would have been start. But Karnataka has selected only Raichur district for that. You know why? Thermal power project is required huge amount of coal. But in Karnataka, there is no coal stations. But in Telangana, we have coal stations. Huge amount of coal stations are available in Telangana, which is nearest place to the Raichur district. Okay, which is nearer to the Raichur district. To get continuous coal to that thermal power project, Karnataka state government has started its thermal power project in Raichur itself. So, what I mean to say over here is, if your industrial unit is localized material oriented, you have to locate that industry nearer to the raw materials. Okay, if it is ubiquitous material oriented, you can locate it anywhere in the entire country. If your unit is localized material oriented, you have to think on that. You have to locate that kind of industrial unit nearer to the, for example, raw materials as state government, Karnataka state government has done, started that uh, thermal power project, uh, project in Raichur districts, Raichur district to get continuous coal as a raw material. Look at the third one, pure materials. Third category of uh, raw materials according to Weber is pure material. The material which imparts its total weight to the final product. What is the meaning of that? The raw material which imparts its entire weight to the final product. Once it is used, again you will not get it back. In any other form, you will not get it back. That is called as pure material. Look at the example. Cotton and wool. Once you are using cotton for lint, thread, raw cloth and ready-made cloth, you will not get cotton again back. If you are using wool for blankets, okay, woolen blankets, you will not get again wool back, for example. So that kind of material is called as pure materials. Look at the fourth one, gross or weight losing materials. The materials which imparts its part of the weight to the final product. Pure materials are imparting the entire weight, but weight losing materials are imparting only part of their weight to the final product. Look at the example, coal and, when you are using coal, after using coal it becomes charcoal. It means what? If you are using 75 percentage of coal for thermal power, Remaining 25 percentage of the same coal, you can use it as charcoal. Okay. So entire coal you, you will not, for example, consume. You will not, for example, utilize for your own business. Okay. 
so that is called as weight losing material according to weber the localized and gross materials have greater influence on the location of industry than ubiquitous and pure materials my dear students if you want to locate an industrial unit in a particular area you have to think you have to study weber's theory as i said in the beginning and out of these four types of materials what weber said if you are going to start an industrial unit you choose only localized materials oriented unit and gross materials oriented unit if you are choosing these two locations according to weber you will get benefited in that business rather than ubiquitous and pure materials you know why in ubiquitous if your industrial unit is ubiquitous oriented and there may be a large number of industry anybody can come and start their own industrial unit so there may be a possibility of competition if it is pure material oriented for example unit once you are using it you will be exhausting that material you will not get it back again so these two ubiquitous and pure material oriented units are risky industrial units rather than the for example um, localized materials and weight losing materials okay further weber used the concept of material index in his theory to indicate whether a particular industry is material oriented or market oriented okay he has used one important index that is material index to understand whether an industry is material oriented or market oriented look at that index according to weber material index is nothing but weight of local material inputs divided by weight of final product while locating an industrial unit you have to focus on these two areas what is the weight of the local material input and what is the weight of the final product if the one example for that i have given down that uh, sentence if the way, weight of local material inputs are 20 units and weight of final products are 10 units which is equal to 2 for example 2 is nothing but material index is greater than 1 look at the second example mi is equal to 10 upon 20 is equal to 0.5 here 10 is the weight of local material inputs 20 is the weight of final goods answer will be 0.5 at this condition mi is less than 1 material index is less than 1 look at the down sentence here if the mi index is greater than 1 industry should locate near the place of raw materials you know why here in the first example raw materials are more than the weight of final goods raw materials are 20 units and uh, weight of final goods are 10 units if the raw materials are more than the final goods you are you, you must locate your industry near to the raw materials and it is always material oriented location of industry that industrial location is called as material oriented it means what material is available more than the weight of final goods look at the second example if the material index is less than 1 industry should near the place of industry should locate the near the place of market consumption centers and it is market oriented here the weight of local materials are less than the weight of final goods local materials inputs are 10 units and the weight of final goods are 20 units answer is 0.5 if mi index is less than 1 industry should locate near the place of market consumption centers it means what here raw materials are become costly these are not available and raw materials are less available than the weight of final products if such is the situation industry should locate near the place of market consumption centers 
and this is about the mi index of your burst theory of industrial location uh, remaining the continued part of this uh, same theory we shall discuss in the next class thank you very much